tall prints that are getting a little bit wobbly, Prusas that are having some issues with extrusion, and failures that are described as war crimes. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 55, Hurricane Ian edition. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. If you like this kind of thing where we talk about print failures, how to fix them and hopefully how to prevent them in the future. Sometimes you'll see some of them aren't exactly preventable. It's just a matter of using the right tool for the right job. Speaking of the right tool, you got this guy right here. It's going to help walk you through the valley, but I will need your help on a couple of these. So make sure you watch all the way through think you guys will enjoy it but i hope you will enjoy the segue to our sponsor 3d musketeers i want to give a massive thank you to those that do support us here at 3d musketeers there's a couple of people that know exactly who they are thank you for your support in making all of this stuff possible because of the generosity of our patreon youtube channel members uh we're getting some really nice camera gear that is supposed to show up tomorrow like six hours before the hurricane comes so that should be interesting and i'm hoping to get all the batteries nice and charged up and ready because i'm hoping to film some really cool content during the hurricane nothing involving 3d printing anyways i'm getting off topic i appreciate your guys' support in making all of this stuff possible and you know if you can't afford a couple of bucks i totally understand like share and subscribe goes a long way we greatly do appreciate it misalignment at higher layers and we can see you're looking okay looking okay and then we got a bit of the wobbliness here see what we got for some other photos so they made this tower to check the quality of taller objects and this is the result they tensioned the belts check the wheels none are loose or too tight they lubricated the z rod loosen the z screw is there anything left they can check or can blame the wobble on in their experience what you're seeing is the movement of the tower flexing being so tall and small in diameter the printer head moving bed moving as well as plastic having resistance while being extruded all adds up to this bingo i absolutely agree what we have going on here is a case of the wobbles when things get taller their center of gravity gets taller and well that causes them to be a little bit like a newborn giraffe here and this is very common for printers that are trying to do small thin objects that are tall when printing tall objects like this there really isn't a way to deal with it unless you go to a printer that is not a bed slinger what you are fundamentally dealing with is some sort of slop in your system and i would bet dollars to donuts it is your bed because this appears to be some sort of weird ass upgraded ender again i know nothing about your speeds your feeds your printer what it is what temps you're printing at what material it is other than it's white filament and we know my feelings about white filament now in this particular case i think white shows us exactly what the problem is so i don't know m m m maybe but there's nothing here to give us any amount of clues as to what we are dealing with so it's a weird ass ender from what i can see and it's doing exactly what I would expect a printer that has springs on its bed to do. Remember, Newtonian physics, force is equal to mass time acceleration, and an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon by another object. And of course, equal but opposite reaction. And as your bed is moving back or around the circle, right? Because your, your bed moves like this, right? Just back and forth. Your x-axis moves like this, and then together, right? It's really weird for me to show that with my hands, but work with me here, right? One can move this way, one can move this way, and together they can make a circle. You're gonna have inertia. Inertia starts to play a game here, right? And if you have a little bit of wiggle down at your plate, it might be, might be a thou, might be nothing. Damn near nothing. Two microns of wiggle. When that's on a fulcrum, okay? That's, you start to deal with error in what is called arc seconds. Uh, Ar Artec Ray is measured in arc seconds. We'll card to that video where I take a look at the Artec Ray for the first time unboxing what is still to this day most expensive unboxing I've ever done. 80,000 US dollars of 3D scanners, which is pretty cool. More scanning content coming soon, by the way. So make sure you get subscribed if you aren't already this deals with the fact that even a small error down low starts to be a problem as you get up higher because well a very small movement down here right if i move a little bit here 
it's not a ton of movement adds up to a ton of movement up here because fulcrums and levers and isaac freaking newton there is no way to solve this not on bed slingers it is just a matter of fact it's a part of the beast it's just what you have to deal with i'm sorry Yes, you could go to a rigid bed, you can go to a ball screw driven Y axis, a ball screw driven X axis, a ball screw driven Z axis, and you'll probably get most of it out. But if you're gonna go through all that work, you might as well just get a Core XY style printer where the bed just goes down and your gantry moves on an XY plane because that will get you, traditionally speaking, better results than a bed slinger. So if you're trying to do tall, thin parts, don't use bed slinger. It's pretty much that simple. You can also look at drastically reducing your speeds as you get higher up, but you really are just kind of fighting a losing battle that I don't necessarily believe will come out to benefit you in the long run. Top surface quality issues. This is a Prusa. Wait, what? It's a Prusa. Ah, okay, it's Prusa Mark 3S, 0.6 CHT, 0.3 layer height. You definitely need to make sure that you have 0.6 millimeter nozzle clicked in Prusa Slicer. If you are using the stock settings, Prusas have 0.4 millimeter nozzles, and if you have not adjusted that and added a 0.6 millimeter nozzle on your Prusa, it's going to look like that. It's going to be under extruded by quite a bit. I would say that you're probably under extruding between 5 and 10% just kind of as the looks at it and we can see here it's because we've got some valleys in between our prints remember if your ruffles have ridges you're over extruding or you're too close to your bed if you've got valleys you are under extruding or you're too far from your bed you want your prints to look like glass now i did take a look at the cht nozzle i even printed in a 0.6 on a prusa mini then we went to the 1.8 because a good friend of the channel, Filament Stories, Miss Courtney, sent some over for me to take a look at. We'll card that video so you guys can take a look. Suffice to say, they ran like a Swiss watch, but I made certain that I actually adjusted the nozzle diameter inside of Prusa Slicer, as well as my line widths inside of the advanced feature. Let me show you where to do that. These are some parts that I'm actually making for Hurricane Ian. Uh, for those that don't know, there's a hurricane. But we're gonna get to this failure because uh, I'm supposed to be running on this printer right here. Suffice to say, it isn't. That's not why we're here. We're here to take a look at our advanced settings. Now, normally your default line width will be 0.45 and some variation of that. I went higher because I want to have layers so thick you turn them into a meme. For something like this, these are wing nut driver tools, by the way. Those that have hurricane shutters here, most of them are put on via wing nuts. And they're a metric pain in the ass, which is, of course, 2.2 standard panes in the ass to put on and take off by hand if you have a cordless drill with a large enough chuck that you can adjust its torque settings if you don't have one that you can adjust torque settings on do not use it you will destroy these parts but these are amazing for basically putting in and taking out wing nuts so there you go and we give them away every hurricane season it's part of what we do and uh, you guys probably already saw this video of course it hasn't come out yet but the uh the adapters for my downspouts so those we made a little bit earlier. I'm also making some of those for some community members that want them. So A plus, help your damn communities out there. Anyways, you're looking for this. You wanna make sure that this is all set correctly. Technically, you don't have to come in here and change this if you don't want to, but it is good to just go in here and make the adjustment. Now, Prusa, of course, does have a 0.6 and a 0.8 variant. If you do want anything larger, you're going to have to add those in yourself and make the necessary adjustments yourself. I've actually pulled up the exact 3MF file that we used in that CHT video so you guys can see what I did. On the extruder itself, I did adjust my nozzle diameter. I adjusted my layer height maximum. I just I'm not going to go down this low. It cannot go down that low, but I adjusted it up to two. That way I have the room that I need. But under the advanced settings, I just went in here and made everything too. 
nice and simple. It can easily do that. So when you go ahead and make those adjustments, just make sure you do it all over and you'll be fine. And there you go. That's how you make a uh, skeletonized version of Mr. Proper Printing in 53 minutes. I've had many fails in my 10 plus years of 3D printing, but I've never experienced something quite so tragic. I can see the Bowden tubes up there and I can see a nest of what appears to be solid spaghetti. What the ever loving sin are we looking at? Oh shit! There's your hot end. Oh my god. Yeah. There's your problem. Oh damn. I did not watch this video prior to this. I'm gonna unmute this. I bet this audio is amazing. Oh yeah, that audio is amazing. Dear Lord. All right, for those that haven't noticed it, that is a hot end. It is not supposed to be there. Your hot end is supposed to be right about there. Now, I guess we're kind of lucky in that it hasn't caught fire. This is probably been running for a minute. Because if we look, that's where the nozzle should be, or really should be out here. That is a lot of distance. Uh, can we enhance? Let's enhance it. Uh, I don't know if we can enhance very well. I'm trying to see how long we've been printing. It looks like either 53 minutes or 53 hours, but based on how slow it's moving, I'm going to assume 53 hours. Dear Lord, have mercy on your soul. That is, uh, that's freaking rough. That's a 62 hour print, so we were looking at it at hour 53, but it looks like it died overnight at only a few hours in. And I totally agree here, hey, better than a few hours in than 60 hours. Mind you, they've also dealt with that same thing where it has been just spewing filament for a minute or two golly that's rough so here's what we got i think what happened is that i'm printing near the limit of my print bed and so it couldn't do a brim you can sort of see the print starting to lift that i guess the left nozzle impacted the lifted print at a bad angle and cracked the throat tube it's a one millimeter nozzle printing 0.35 millimeter lines i'm assuming you mean that's your layer height that is quite small for a one millimeter nozzle. You would want to go quite a bit higher than that if you are going to run a one millimeter nozzle. Because, yeah, that is like, well, it's 35% of your nozzle diameter, Grant. Of course, you could do the math here. God, that is real tiny. I mean, it's not impossible, but seems like a waste of a one millimeter nozzle. It is a Raise 3D Pro 2 Plus, and it is direct drive. So that's good and there's a lot more weight and force involved in the whole print head they think that there are some design defects with this printer rather than just a manufacturing one they've just never experienced a situation such like this particular war crime i don't know if i believe that raise 3d is a bad company i believe that raise 3d is building printers pretty much to a limit don't get me wrong this appears to be a pretty substantial screw here it might be a ball screw could it be a rod of some sort but i'm hoping it's a ball screw they've got linear rails in here they use an ultimaker style motion system which works for ultimaker but on larger printers can be a little convoluted honestly and it is not the most sturdy system out there and they do cut corners right i like Ray's 3d i think they have a lot of value in the industry but i don't think it is with businesses now if race 3d wants to try to prove me wrong i am more than happy to take a look at their printers i know race has gotten better so i would like to take a look at some race 3d printers let me know if you guys want to see it but there's really no good way to detect this i would guess that you'd be able to have a step or two skipped here so if i had some ability to detect skipped steps you might get lucky and on a machine like a prusa that you can add skip step detection to like it's built right in to the mark 3s and you can choose to disable it if you want i have mine disabled because i've talked about it before but the printers will resonate the rack and cause them all to go into skip step detection when they they, they didn't it's a, it's a fun problem i don't know if it would have saved you here this is pretty problematic i mean if nothing else it shows you that hey thankfully your thermistor didn't fail so there's that and we know the printer did not go into thermal runaway because you would have had a fire but this is also why we advocate especially for long print jobs don't leave your printers unattended and if you need to 
just add a camera and a smart plug. Because if you saw this failure 24 hours ago, which I presume was at least as long as it has been failed for, you would have been able to save yourself a lot of filament. Now, the time would have been gone because you likely ran this over a weekend, but you're not going to get that time back anyways. So you might as well try to cut your losses on part failures, material losses, and more importantly, your future frustrations when you have to use an easy out to get your heat break out. This is one of those cases where I would just replace the entire hot end or at least that entire side of the hot end if it is not too expensive. It is absolutely not worth the effort in my opinion, especially if you're running this as a business. It's not a lot of fun. I'd like to take a look at Ray's 3D printers. I know they've had some time since the N2 plus. I'd like to give them another shot. So uh, if you got contacts at Ray's 3D, well, I'd love to talk. I think it could be fun. And of course, as I said earlier, I got a few of my own fails this week. In fact, this printer right here has given me two failures during recording this video. We'll cut to a bit of the random footage of me trying to fix it. Oh dear lord. Oh, you failed. You dog turd. I don't know why it failed. It just randomly did. Sometimes that happens. But I did not follow my own damn advice. What do I say? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, if you like it, then you should put a brim on it. I didn't. I sent it. I risked it for the biscuit and I lost. I lost so bad. Oh man. I was like six hours deep into a print of these and boy howdy did they just rightfully fail. And I don't want to put a brim on this because it's just going to suck. It's going to suck to remove. And these are to help people, but I think... It won't matter because I think you can just push past the brim. So I think I'm just going to put a brim and pray for the best. I'm going to run some overnight because the people need help and I want to help them get the help that they need. It sucks, but it is what it is. And the other failure that happened on this printer is I got a filament wrap. And uh, a lot of you will blame the manufacturer for a filament wrap, but I want you to think about how filament is wound just for a second. And let's assume that it is not just, you know, when you have the full kilo that doesn't just let go of the filament and just, you know, goes all crazy like that, that it is instantly taped or somehow bound to the side of it, of the spool, so it doesn't become a mess. It cannot physically get knotted unless it is somehow touched by a human during the process of spooling. Now, to be more specific, it's more likely that your dumbass accidentally let the filament flop around when you shouldn't have and you didn't keep it constrained and it got caught underneath itself and made a little bit of a knot. Thankfully, I heard that happening, was able to do a filament change on the Prusa and reload it after I've cleared the knot. Unfortunately, the print still failed because it knocked the part off the bed, but uh, I don't know. That part printed just fine without a brim previously, so just added a four millimeter brim and sent it. So hopefully it works out well. But I hate when people blame the manufacturer for that stuff. But either way, that failure is completely on me. I did not constrain the filament at some point and uh, it got messed up. So sometimes just cause you're a ding dong and you, you gotta say, yeah, no, that's a me problem. It is what it is. That's all I got for you guys today. Seriously, I hope you all stayed safe out there. Those of you in the Florida, uh, lower half of the United States area, I really hope you guys are staying safe. And those up in Nova Scotia that just got a hurricane, I hope you guys are doing all right. Don't forget to call your loved ones. Seriously, please don't. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. I want it to feel the pain that it has made me feel. <laughs> It's going to be the Joker by the time you want to know how I got these scars. <laughs> God damn it. Do not use that as the. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for watching this video. And a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier. And I remember if you want to get in that list, click those links in that description down below. Join our Patreon. Greatly appreciate it. Right below me will be the entire Print Fix Friday series. Well, you can learn how to detect fails, how to look at them, how to figure out what they are, and how to fail a little bit less. And right next to that will be my video about hurricane prep, since that hasn't been edited yet. I hope it's good. I hope you guys like it. I'll see you all down in the comments, and hopefully in the next one. Take care.